In video two, we're going to actually start looking at the Java code itself and analyzing it. And specifically, we're going to start with that program that we wrote in video one, uh, which had a single method in it called main. To start things off, I'm going to repeat the steps that I did in video one to create a new project, a new Java project. So I've opened IntelliJ, and I'm just going to click new project here. Um, Java is actually selected by default so I'm just going to press next there next again and I'm just going to call it I'm going to call it Java fundamentals Java fundamentals and finish and in the background now that's going to create our directory structure and a few files there like we saw in video one and to actually write a Java class or Java program we can right click in source here new Java class and this gives us a dialog where we can create a Java class so just as in video one I'm just going to call that hello um, and enter so it's generated the skeleton of a Java program a Java class for us and I'm going to actually hit enter a few times to give some space to work with when we're looking at these early examples it's nice just to have some space to visualize what we've what we've got and those empty spaces will just be ignored when the program is run so it's just to give us it's just to help it make it easier to visualize for us uh, so there we have class definition and we can just type psvm to give us a shortcut to define this method so one thing to say about um, Java classes is that they, they typically have properties and methods so let's say for example we were writing a Java class that represented the, an employee of a company the properties may be for example the name date of birth salary the role um, of, of that employee and um, then the methods typically do things with the properties so for example we, we might have methods that will ca calculate the employee's salary return the employee's name calculate what leave the employee has um, return the, the employee's employee number uh, and the name of the employee's boss that sort of thing so you have properties and methods uh, in these early examples we're just gonna have we have no properties we just have a single method this one called public static void main um, to illustrate how things work and of course we'll then start to build up examples that have properties and other methods um, so if you remember from last time again we can do a shortcut here s-o-u-t I just choose the top one in the list system out print line then in double quotes um, hello world like that and just like last time well what I'll do first I'll put some more spacing in there just so we can see all this stuff laid out you can see as well that, that, that what this IntelliJ is doing for us and other, there are other IDEs available as well of course another very popular one is Eclipse uh, but I'm using IntelliJ um, it does it helps you a lot like it's, it's doing this nice indentation for us so we can see that this method belongs inside this class because of the indentation it's color coding certain words for us uh, and another thing it would do it would flag any errors so for example if I were to spell public wrong put a couple of X's on it there you can see it's flagging that it's putting it red and there's a squiggly red line there and if I hover over it it will say it cannot resolve the symbol public XXXXXX um, so it's helping us there we, we know we can't run that now because there's an error with it so if I correct that again it all looks good now there's no red red squiggly lines or anything like that so I can right click it and choose run hello main so that will now compile it and run it and we should get the output in the bottom left you can see it's doing stuff down here and there's our output so this particular method public static void main string args is a very special one in Java because the presence of that method means that this class can be run so if I were to change this slightly so for example main is the name of the method as we'll see in a minute because we're gonna have a look in a minute all the different what all these different words mean but that is is the name what if I just changed it to hello which actually would make kind of more sense in a way because that's what this is doing it's just saying hello now you can see that it hasn't put anything in red there so this is perfectly valid 
this is a perfectly valid Java class but if I try to run it again and I can I can run it this time by clicking this play button here because we, as we've already run it once it gives us like a runtime configuration there to run it again or the play button down here it's the same so let's, let's do this one this time if I run it now it's trying to do some stuff here but I get an error it's saying main method not found in class hello please define the main method as public static void main string args so what it's saying is this is this is a, a valid Java cl class nothing nothing no errors in it or anything but we can't run it because we don't have this exact signature main like that another thing I could do is remove this because all methods have round brackets like that and we can pass arguments into those round brackets if we want to and the main method has this string square brackets args which as we'll see later means an array of strings I can remove that to say that this method doesn't take any arguments although it still needs the round brackets again I don't have any red there indicating this is perfectly valid but I'll get the same error if I try to run it same error again please define the method as exactly that it has to be exactly that and you'll notice this is grey as well this is this is grey at the moment if I put this back in now IntelliJ knows ah it's the main it's this method this classic method so it kind of color codes it there to show us it kind of knows what we mean there this particular implementation of the main method simply prints out hello world as we've seen and it references another Java class system and it's getting the, the standard out output stream which is this terminal itself and we're printing the line to it hello world so we'll look at some other examples of main methods in the next video but for the rest of this video let's concentrate on what all these different words mean so let's go through some slides and have a look at that first hello world program so there we go we reproduce the code in there uh, with a white background this time but that's just just the code that we did before in IntelliJ uh, the hello world program so let's just go back to what we had to start with first of all we declared the class itself and I've just got lots of space in there where our method will go later just for visualization purposes let's have a look at what these different things mean so the word public that's the access modifier we're declaring this class as public so we're not putting any restrictions on on any other programs or, or individuals who want to run that class we're making it completely public we're not restricting it at all class is the type of thing we're doing the entity type um, for now we can think of a Java class as a Java program for these early examples there are other diff uh, empty types we can coding Java such as interfaces and enums which we'll get to but we're saying that we're coding now a public class um, a Java class this is the name of the class hello and there are conventions and rules as to how you name classes which we'll go into in a later video and then we have the start and end of the class body with the curly break brackets there anything in between those brackets make up the body of the class so that's like the properties and the methods of, of that class so in this case of course we just have one single method public static void main string args so let's take away the annotations at the class level and now look at them at the method level and you can see it's indented um, it, that's, it doesn't have to be indented it, st it still would work if you didn't do that but that's the convention and you should do that you should indent things so methods should be indented from from the class definition and the lines within the method should be indented from the method declaration so what do these words mean at the method level well that's the same as the class access modifier we're saying it's public when putting no restrictions on on who or what can run it same as the same as the class itself the next keyword in the method signature is static and this is quite a difficult one to explain and grasp early on in the course but really all we need to know at this stage is that static means that this method is owned at a class level and it's easy for us to run all we need to know, to know is the name of the class and we can run this method just by invoking the name of this class 
later on we'll go into exactly what static means and what static methods and non-static methods are void that's the return type so a method may return something to whoever called the method void means it's not returning anything and sometimes this is confusing because you think you, you look at what it's doing it's going to print hello world to the screen and you think well isn't it returning hello world but it's actually not returning hello world it's it's just printing hello world to the screen so if it was actually returning hello world we would see the keyword return there and it would return that word or words hello world to whoever invoked this method so a void return type means it's not going to return anything to you it's just going to do something and then finish main is the name of the method the next part of the method signature is defined within these round brackets so all Java methods have these round brackets but not all Java methods have something within the, the round brackets but the main method is required to have this string square brackets um, and, and it's called args in this case by default it's called args you can call it what you want but by de default it's called args which really stands for arguments and we'll look at some examples of how of how that is used what it's actually for because in this simple hello world example we're not doing anything with it but it has to be there as part of the structure again as with the class we have a start of the body and an end of the body and between these curly brackets there we have um, the actual executable statements in in our case just the one we're going to print out hello world to the screen so that's the main method the classic public static void main string args method of java which is required for any class to be runnable